Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today I want to highlight just some of the development features coming in on the new LibreOffice version 7, which is in release candidate mode. You can download a variety of ways to test this out for yourself. Um, I've actually downloaded the app image. That way I can do a side-by-side -side comparison of 6 and 7. Now, I'll say on the outset that for the basic general user, there's not going to be a lot of differences between the two. So if you're not really going to be able to spot whether you're on 6 or 7. Now the back end, there should be some things that work a little bit better, such as they are now saving docx files in the latest uh, 2019 docx, docx format instead of the 2007 compatibility mode. And there's a few other little odds and ends. We're going to go ahead and have a look at the release notes and uh, where you can get this out to test it out for yourself. So definitely go ahead and test it out, particularly if you're like me and you use this all the time be a great opportunity for you to go ahead and uh, test it out, maybe even grab that app image and run it side by side with your other system. So we're actually over here on Endeavor OS running Budgie. Uh, this is just in my virtual box, just so I can give things a test out. Now what I wanted to do is I wanted to have somebody send me some files with some more advanced things, and uh, Pizza Loving Nerd sent me a document, but I really found out that there's not a lot different between 6 and 7. Uh, the only incompatibility issue I'm seeing is with word art. Uh, we'll go ahead and have a look at that document in, in each of those. And uh, so let's go ahead and first look at the release notes. So the release notes, basically, we have uh, basic changes. So they implemented padding numbers. So uh, basically adding more padding inside of some of the numbering systems. Again, a lot of these are, are either more advanced features. Most people aren't actually going to see a lot of these changes. But you can kind of flip, uh, flip through here. Fix mail merge prog progress. Um, improve rotating text handlers and improving semi-transparent text. So semi-transparent text, this is actually something that I have looked for in the past, which was not there, particularly when I'm putting inside columns inside of books that I'm formatting in LibreOffice. Semi-transparent text could help with a few of those issues, although usually I just do those types of images on GIMP and then import them into the document later, which actually tends to work a little bit better from formatting perspective anyway. Uh, bookmarks can now be displayed in line, so you can kind of see uh, where bookmarks are. And there's some language fixes to various autocorrects. So if you're part of some of these other languages, we have Czech, German, Icelandic, uh, Slavic, Slovene, uh, or is it Slovene? My apologies, can't remember. Uh, don't don't know how to pronounce that. I should say, uh, Russia, Ukrainian. There's a few changes in there, so just a few few fixes to. Uh, your more international uh, repairs on um, uh, spell checkers and things like that. Here's some new accessibility features. Experimental features have been added to make documents more accessible. An accessibility check tool to review common accessibility problems, such as support for PDF UA specifications in the PDF export box and more. They have blog posts on all these items. You can find these release notes and flip through them. So new spreadsheet functions in Calc where uh, we have random and random between. Um, I guess I've never tried using random numbers on Calc before. Maybe it didn't exist. Maybe it's just improved. Uh, changes in some spreadsheet function. And overall performance, again, uh, improved opening speed of XLSX files with many pictures, improving searching speed with an auto filter pull down, improved calc auto fill speed. Uh, I want to play around with this a little bit. I do use uh, calc regularly for my budgets and such. And so that's actually an area that I would really like to look into that, uh, see how it works. There's a few little issues that I've uh, that I've generally had, like it doesn't save my uh, my self-formatting and things on my document, and I don't know why. So I want to look into that, and maybe the new version will fix some of those items there. A few other items. Here's uh, impress, and, uh, impress and draw. Uh, subscripts now return to the default of 8%, so uh, they're kind of basically fixing how the superscripts and subscripts are working. That's actually good, <laughs> honestly. Uh, speeding up some basic things. There's some base stuff, some math stuff. And then inside of the core, we have uh, more previous images from galleries. I did look around at some of the newer templates and things uh, that will, uh, there's a, a little bit more adjustments, a little bit more options in there as well. So like I said, for the most part, you're not going to see a whole ton of difference 
probably just more performance differences you'll notice but as far as functions features design style not a whole lot different i'm going to pull them up side by side so you guys can have a look what they look like the big one though is looking at some of the formatting changes as far as your otf goes to uh, up to 1.3 up 1.3 extended so newer versions of open document specifications those are new Rather than going back to older ones, you can actually go back to the previous versions if you need those previous versions as well. Uh, again, improvements for the docx folder uh, file filter. So instead of saving 2007 compatibility mode, it actually goes to the latest version of docx. So we should actually see more improvement in exporting document files out um, and um, it should work better with compatibility if you're sending sending documents to somebody you somebody else using Microsoft Office. However, I'll say the biggest formatting. There has been very few significance. I know one of you people are going to say, "Oh, it doesn't open this one piece of the document." The fact is, there is like less than one percent of issues that you're going to have transferring those, except for fonts. Your fonts is your biggest reason. If you're just opening up a document in LibreOffice and sending it to somebody without paying attention to your fonts, the font that a Linux system has by default differ from the fonts that a Windows and Mac system have by default. If you as the Linux user adds the Windows and, and Mac type fonts, saves the documents and fonts that those users are going to have, you're not going to find uh, issues as far as uh, what is in there. Again, the only exception that I have found is um, uh, Word Art, which doesn't work in 6.4. It doesn't work in 7 either. So you can kind of see um, here's standard toolbars. All toolbars are now locked by default. That's good, so you're not going to accidentally move your toolbars around. That's actually a really good thing. Some people accidentally click something, change the program, and then they're frustrated. They can't figure out how to get it back. So if you want to move your toolbars around, you have to manually unlock them first. We have a new, um, uh, a new icon theme called Sukapura following Apple's color palette. So um, that, I can't, I think that that, I, I can't remember if that one's actually set by default or not. Mine's default, we'll have a look at that. And there's some new dialog boxes, things like that, stuff I'm not going to see here in Linux. So that's kind of what we have. As far as where you can pick this guy up, just head over to their main web page and under download, you do have a couple options. If you want to look at your development versions here, and uh, we have our uh, 7.0 RC2, this will give you the downloadable for either RPM or DEB. It's auto detecting RPM in this case. Um, and you can grab the source code directly. If you want the app image, I gotta remember if I can find it again. Okay, so here's flat pack snap app image. Head on over to your app image. And then here's your um, LibreOffice. So here's your fresh uh, and your still version. So basic version just with some of the basic things. Here's the standard version and here's the full version. So if you don't need like databasing, don't bother with the full version. If you do need it, just download the full version. Under our um, more downloads, we have stable, daily, old, and pre-release. So in this case, I just went over to the pre-release versions and click on the 7.0 and here are your app images for your pre-release versions. So this guy here is the one that I have, I think. Um, this is the LibreOffice 7.0 zero RC2 app image and this is the default uh, United States English. You can just have a look at the lettering over here if you need it from a different language. Um, you can download it. So this one's the Great Britain English. Um, so you can just download the one that you want. So this is the one that we have. So let's go ahead and have a look at what we are looking at. So this one over here on uh, this side is going to be our um, 6.4 version. And I actually have in my files, it's still in my downloads folder over here. This is the one. Now, this personal edition that you saw there, that's what caused a little bit of the early ruckus. Oh, are they going with different licensing? Well, again, they're just changing their marketing. I have a whole video on that, but they're just changing their, their marketing to have basically their, their standard free version is the same one it's always going to be. That's now deemed the personal version. But they're also doing a more corporate, kind of like in the... The same thing that like Nextcloud does, the same thing that Red Hat does. It's effectively the same version, but it has it, it actually has full on professional support. Okay, so over here, this guy though, if we pull this down, LibreOffice, this is going to be seven. 
Uh, so this is version 7, and the dot 2 is the RC2. So this is the one we're looking at. You can see from these out, out set here, they look basically identical. All right, so I actually opened up the crisp.doc. This one came from uh, Pizza Loving Nerds. So go check out Pizza Loving Nerds channel if you haven't before. So this guy here, uh, we're going to open this and read only. We're just going to have a look at what each of these guys look like. All right, we're going to close that out. So I did actually add the same fonts that he had. Uh, one of the things that I notice um, out of the box here is I don't have the font tools. I'm not sure if that's uh, a function of... Uh, or maybe I messed around with my toolbars. I might have actually messed around with my toolbars earlier uh, just in playing around with it. Let me see if I can look at my toolbars again real quick. It is under... Why can I not find it now? There you go. User interface, standard toolbar, single toolbar, sides. I think I'm on standard on, on that one, and let's see what this one's on. So I'm not sure if maybe I broke the toolbars and moved things around as I was playing around with it, or maybe just this one's not missing, or maybe it's it's missing because I'm in a read-only mode. Uh, the toolbars are a little bit off, but regardless, I did install all of the Calibri and the Windows Windows Vista and Windows TrueType fonts onto this uh, just because I asked him to send me the document in whatever the defaults were, which in that version was Calibri. So we have Calibri Lite. So we can see here that he gave us um, some information here. He gave us uh, a table, which is working just fine. Here is an embedded chart working just fine. So before reading this, after reading this uh, cringe level, very good. And then looking at the next page, here is a video. So here's a video. Um, so if you, uh, I don't know if you can uh, double click and see that or not, but the, it is a hyperlink video. Oop, there you go. Got it to play. All right, so that went uh, went over there. And again, shift control does the same on both documents. Looks effectively the same. Here's adding some ASCII art. And you can see the word art is the one area that got messed up. So that word art is, is where it was messed up. All right, so you can kind of see here that uh, everything looks good uh, other than the word out, art over, uh, over masking that. Let's go into our files, and if I go under my documents, I believe I had him send me a PDF of what it's supposed to look like. So you can see it's not different except for the word art. So again, word art's the only place it's messed up. Not a lot of differences from this perspective on, uh, on the... Uh, uh, six versus the seven. So that's why I say from the user's perspective, we're actually not seeing a lot different. All right, so here you can kind of see where we're not in read-only mode. Now we actually have uh, the toolbars there. So that's what it was. It's the fact it was in read-only mode, so it didn't give me a lot of the extra toolbars. So uh, there is what we can kind of see there is not a lot different. Uh, we, do have, uh, we do have all of our, here's our calc. Let's load up one of each of these guys. You can see everything looks uh, looks good. Even in the app image here, all of our theming is completely flawless. You wouldn't even know that one of them is an app image. And that's why I prefer app images over snaps or flat packs or anything else. Uh, app images are the best. Uh, let's have a look at that theming system. I think we got to go under options and I got to remember exactly where our theming is at. Okay, so it's under our view. So our default loaded is the automatic elementary. And uh, this one down here, Sukapura, is the new one. So let's hit apply on that. So you can kind of see what that new theming looks like there as far as that is concerned. So it actually does look very crisp, very clean. I like it. I might actually go to that. That's a really good theming set. Uh, let's see if it's actually in this one since this is running Arch. Let's see if it's actually in Arch too. I don't know if it will be. So it's not. So you can see that this really nice cool one's not in Arch. Let's see if there's anything else. So this one's not too bad. That one's horrendous. That one's uh, much more skeuomorphic. I think that's our, our uh, kind of our default. 
This one's not too far off from it. There's Breeze. And back to our default. So that new color palette is very nice. You will have to turn it on. It's not set at least on the RC2 as default, but it is a very nice icon theme there as well. So there is your LibreOffice 7 uh, RC2. And uh, it does look very good. It's very promising. And uh, I might actually download the app image there and play around with it on my writing computer and see... Uh, see how well it works. Uh, I might even try and format a book over there with it. We'll see how that works. And overall, though, it looks like a very nice, very impressive system. So can't wait for this to come out. And uh, you can definitely go on over there, grab the app image, or if you want to install it system-wide, you can grab a Deb RPM. They do have a snap. They do have an app image for uh, the RC as well, I believe. Uh, so you can go ahead and play around with that. So there is our very brief look at the new upcoming LibreOffice 7 RC2. Go ahead and have a look at that and uh, thank the Document Foundation for such an excellent job. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.